Science says also that there is no compensating uphill flow of energy to balance its downhill flow. There is an uphill flow, otherwise a downhill flow would be impossible. Every wave is a compression, expansion, pump. The whole universe is a giant pump. The two-way piston of the universal pump constitutes the universal heartbeat. A one-way universe is as impossible as a one-way pump is impossible. The compressed condition of this universe is exactly equal to the expanded condition. The compressed condition is gravitation. The expanded condition is radiation. Gravitation and radiation are equal opposites. Each is helpless without the other. In fact, each condition is impossible to produce without simultaneously producing the other. Heat is the effect of multiplied resistance to the compression of gravitation. Cold is the effect of the opposite strain of resistance to evacuation or emptiness, which results from the expansion of radiation. There, there is as much cold in the great expanses of space as there is heat in the compressed suns in all of this universe. There is not one amper of difference between these two opposite conditions of the electric workers in the whole universe, nor is there one milligram of weight in it which is not balanced between the two. This universe of electric waves is divided into wave fields each wave field is equally divided by contraction of gravitation and expansion of radiation. The potential of solids in a wave field is equally compensated by the potential of space which surrounds the solids. It is impossible to unequalize these two conditions in any wave field or produce either one of them separately without simultaneously producing the other, as it would be to polarize one end of a bar magnet without producing an equal pole of opposition at the other end. This wave universe is divided into wave fields. Each wave field is an electric battery, which is forever being charged by the centrifugal polarizing power of gravitation and discharged by the centrifugal depolarizing power of radiation. This process is a manifestation of the life-death-growth-decay principle, which is ever-present in every effect of motion in nature, without exception. Together they constitute the electric action-reaction sequences, without which there could be no universe. It is not true to nature, therefore, to say that either heat, cold, compression, expansion, or any other expression of motion is energy. If the power to cause motion is in the balanced state of rest, it necessarily follows that energy is in the stillness of rest and not in motion, which, which is effective cause. The mind of the Creator is the fulcrum from which the wave lever of mind thinking extends to express the energy of creative mind. Thought waves cannot, therefore, be the energy which causes them, which cause them to become thought waves. Any lever is powerful without a fulcrum. No, wait a minute, I said it wrong. Any lever is powerless without a fulcrum. The power to move lies in the fulcrum which never moves. All motion starts from a point of rest, seeks a point of rest, and returns in the reverse direction to its starting point of rest. Test this fact by throwing a ball in the air, breathing in and out, pulling a change, or walking. Now, pulling a chain or walking. Electrical effects of motion are not energy. Matter in motion is a marionette on the end of two mind-controlled electric strings. What is the work of the universe? The only work performed in this universe is the work of recording thought forms of mind imagining 
into positively charging bodies, which are expressing the vitalizing half of the life-death cycle of creating bodies, and into negatively discharging bodies, which are expressing the devitalizing other half of that cycle. That is the only work there is to do in all creation, for God records his concentrated, decentrated thinking in the electric actions, reactions of living, dying bodies, which appear and disappear in sequential cycles. Creations of bodies is the only work that man does. Everybody created by God or man appears from invisible stillness and disappears into that same stillness of its source to reappear periodically in life-death, growth-decay cycles forever. All bodies manifest eternal idea by eternally repeating their manifestations of idea in continuous cycles which have no beginning or ending. To exemplify Cold generates, generation contracts, contraction heats, heat radiates, radiation expands, and expansion cools. Sound, for another example, is a body of interchanging motion which appears from silence and returns to it. The silent harp string is the fulcrum of energy from which the moving harp string extends as a vibrating lever of motion to manifest the ideal of a musical tone in life-death cycles. This polarized sex condition pulsing thought wave universe. Science has for years been searching for some simple underlying basic principle of motivation which is present in every effect of motion. Mathematicians have hoped to find it and reduce it to a, to a basic formula. Physicists have sought for it in the hope of thus discovering the life principle. Science has never found it and never will find it as so long as it is sought for in either matter or motion. That elusive secret is to be found only in the zero light of the universal equilibrium which is the fulcrum of the sex-divided electrical universe of thought waves of two-wave motion. That forever hidden secret of the ages is the divider of the one zero into a seeming two extended zeros, and it is the multiplier of the two into countless twos. The name of that great divider at rest into two-way electric motion is polarity. Polarity is the controller, the measure, and the surveyor of electric intensity of desire in mind for the actions, reactions, needed for creative expressions. Polarity extends its surveyed measure of desire from a zero point of rest in the universal light to two extended zero points of rest where motion reverses its direction its polarity, and its condition. These two points of stillness, where electric motion reverses from one opposite pressure condition to the other, are what science calls magnetic poles. The office of magnetic poles is to balance and control all electrically divided motion in the universe. All electrically divided matter whether atom or giant sun, is controlled by a still-centering point of magnetic light. The two extended poles of that still light measure the intensity of desire, which motivates those extensions from their source of energy in the still light. Electricity, electricity vitalizes and devitalizes charges and discharges, gravitates and radiates, in-breathes and out-breathes, lives and dies, appears and disappears, compresses and expands, heats and cools, grows and decays, integrates and disintegrates, and solidifies and vaporizes. 
vaporizes by its electric action reaction, which divide the one into countless pairs of separate ones under polar control. When man breathes in, he polarizes his body. He vitalizes it into wakeful action and an awareness of sensation. He charges his body with higher electric, electrical potential. He manifests life. When man breathes out, he depolarizes his body. He devitalizes it into sleepy inaction and lessening awareness of sensation. He discharges his body, body by lowering its potential. He manifests death. Polarity, periodicity is the basis of the constitution of matter. Nature is engaged in the making of but one form, the cube sphere, which means the same as though we said female, male, of man. The spear is the positive centering sun. The cube is the invisible surrounding wave field. All matter is thus divided into positive solids surrounded by negative space. As matter begins its formation into spears, its first shape is disc-like, for it begins at the base of a cone. In a series of efforts which constitute the octave wave, the first disc-like effort gradually prolates until the perfect spear is formed at wave amplitude. This is the process by means of which matter emerges from space. During this process, the balance poles which control all matter move gradually toward the pole of rotation. When the spear is perfected, as it finally is at carbon, the two poles coincide with the pole of rotation and the equator of the perfected sphere is 90 degrees from the wave's axis. Likewise, the wave field becomes a true cube. Likewise, any element which has reached its true sphere status will crystallize as a true cube. Likewise, any divided pairs of elements which unite as one on wave amplitude amplitude, such as sodium and chlorine, will crystallize in the true cube shape of its wave field. Conversely, as true spheres oblate, the two balancing poles move away from the pole of rotation and toward the wave axis until depolarization is completed and magnetic poles disappear in the plane of the wave axis. This is the manner in which space swallows up matter. The mechanics of this process of polarization and depolarization, under the guiding control of two pairs of magnetic poles, will be more fully described later. This electric process of polarization takes place with increasing intensity for one half of every cycle, whether of one breath, the cycle of a day, a year, or a lifetime. A man of 40 will have reached his fully polarized strength to manifest life in the first half of his life-death cycle. Depolariz depolarization then assumes control as polarity reverses at the wave amplitude of man's life cycle. Devitalization then begins, and from their own man manifests the death half of the cycle. This process takes place in every creating particle of matter, or any combination of particles, whether in man, ant, electron, or nebula. As polarization increases in intensity, the strains and tensions set up by the desire of opposites of polarity to pull away from each other, increase in their intensity. This fact is exactly the opposite effect from the conclusion stated in the column, Cool Coulomb Law. As polarization decreases, the strains and tensions of electric opposition relax until polarity entirely disappears in the rest condition of the equipotential plane of the wave axis. 
this fact should not be interpreted as electric opposites attracting each other, for depolarization means that the ability to oppose lessens as each pole voids the other in the rest condition, but they still thrust away from each other until their end. The entire process of polarization and depolarization of every action-reaction of nature could well be described as a lever reaching out in opposite directions from its fulcrum until it could reach no further, then reversing those directions and unwillingly withdrawing into its fulcrum where motion ceases to again begin and again reverse.